time traveling with the Big Dipper. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regis, outreach astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory. We're both here to help you be sure you know what you're seeing in the night sky when you look, look up. up. With Astronomy Day near the end of this week on Saturday, April 28th, the Big Dipper is in a great location for viewing. The stars of the Big Dipper were some of Jack Horkheimer's favorites. That's right, James. And every spring, Jack would encourage us stargazers to make an effort and go out and find this most famous and best-loved star pattern. One of the greatest things about the Big Dipper is that the stars are at just the right distance from us, that the light we see coming from them takes a lifetime to get here. Well, let's show you. Okay, we have our sky set for just after sunset next week. And if you look toward the north, you'll see the seven bright stars that make up the Big Dipper. You might be surprised to know that these stars are all roughly the same distance from us. In fact, the stars are so incredibly far away that we have to measure their distance with a special term, a measure of distance which we call a light year. That's right, Dean. A light year is simply how far light travels in one year which is a distance of approximately six trillion miles, which further means that if there were a star six trillion miles away from us, we would be looking at the star not as it exists now, but as it existed one year ago. So let's take the stars of the Big Dipper and do a little time traveling. When we look at the Big Dipper, we're actually looking back in time. The closest star is the one at the bend of the handle, Mizar. It's 78 light years away, which means that when we look at Mizar, we see it as it actually existed 78 years ago, in 1934, the same year that Gene Cernan, the last man on the moon, was born. The tiny star next to it, Alcor, and the fourth star in the Dipper's Cup, Megrez, are both 81 light years away. So, the light that left those stars left in 1931, the same year that the Star Spangled Banner was officially adopted by Congress as the national anthem of the United States of America. Alioth is the first star in the handle and lies between Megrez and Mizar. It's 80 light years away, so when we look at Alioth tonight, we see the light that left that star in 1932, six years before our favorite stargazer, Jack Horkheimer, was born. Indeed, and that's not all. The last star in the handle, Alcade, is so far away that the light that left it began its journey 100 years ago in 1912, the same year the Titanic had its ill-fated trip across the Atlantic. The last two stars are the pointer stars, Dube and Merak. We use these stars to find the North Star. Merak, the farthest from the North Star, is 79 light years from Earth. But Dube, the one closer to the North Star, is a whopping 123 light years from us. Yep. The light that left Dube left in 1889. And what happened in 1889, you might ask? Well, it was the year that residents of California and Nevada experienced a New Year's Day total solar eclipse, an experience that really rang in the new year. Looking at the stars of the Big Dipper can really make you feel like a time traveler. So, in 2052, we'll get to see the light that left Mizar the year I was born. And, by my calculations, James, you'll be 85 that year? Yep, I'll be getting ready for Halley's Comet to return in about nine more years. Yeah, oh, it's just a barely a tick of the clock, cosmically speaking. <laughs> so, next time you look up at the Big Dipper, remind yourself, if you're still young, that someday you will see these stars as they actually existed when you first appeared on this planet. And if you're not so young, delight in the thought that you are looking back at some of the few things that appear exactly as they were in those sunlit days and star-filled nights of youth. Happy stargazing! And happy time traveling! Keep looking, looking up. up.